Welcome to our lecture online. Now let's take a look at the inclined plane and the simple example where we have a single object on an inclined plane. It will be sliding down the plane and we're trying to find the acceleration. That's the typical question that will ask you, what is the acceleration of the object as it slides down the inclined plane? There may be some additional questions such as what is the velocity at the very bottom of the plane or what is the angle required before it begins to slide, things like that. So those are slightly um, different types of questions they may ask, but it's the same general approach will apply to all these types of problems. So whenever you have an inclined plane, the basic concepts are that there will be an angle, so the inclined plane will have a certain angle associated with it. You will place an object on the inclined plane, which has a certain amount of mass, and then what you do with that is you realize that there will be the force of gravity pulling down on that object. So first we're going to take a look at it when there's no friction yet, but what we do here with this force, the weight, we have two components, one that is parallel to the inclined plane and one that is perpendicular to the inclined plane. So we call this one, oh by the way, this angle theta here is the same as this angle theta over here. And then this component becomes the mg sine theta and this component here becomes the mg cosine theta. So we tend to do that with every single example. And if you look at all five examples, they have that exact figure right there. Now, if there's no friction, then this is pretty well all that there is to it. What we do have is we have a normal force pushing back from the surface, and that normal force here will always be equal to the force that pushes the object into the inclined plane. At this, kind, at this time it's only gravity, but it could be additional forces like some force pushing down on it. But so the normal force in this case is going to be equal to the mg cosine theta. And then you realize that these two forces cancel each other out. This force is no longer there because we decomposed into its two components and we just have the one force pushing it down and that's the force that will make the object accelerate down the incline. And so when we then solve the problem, we then use the concept where the net force equals the mass times acceleration, and in this case the net force will just be the mc sine theta. But if there's friction, then you have to consider other forces. So let's take a look at some of the examples that you might run into, and these are typically test questions you might run into on the inclined plane. So in our first example, we have exactly what we have over there. A simple example where there's no friction, there's only one force, that is aiding the acceleration, so we can then see that the, the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass, and the net force means that we take all the forces that aid acceleration, meaning pointing in the same direction as acceleration, and we subtract from that all the opposing forces which point in the opposite direction of the acceleration. In this case there's no opposing forces, only the aiding force, so the acceleration equals mg sine theta divided by m, or simply acceleration equals to g sine theta. In our second example, we now add friction. So we have a coefficient of friction of 0.2, and so now you can see that there's a friction force pointing in the opposite direction, which is equal to the normal force times mu. Again, the normal force equals the component of the force of gravity that pushes it into the incline, and so therefore the friction force is mg cosine theta times the coefficient of friction. So the acceleration this time becomes the force aiding, mg sine theta, minus the force opposing, mg cosine theta mu, which is a friction force, divided by the mass. And then we simplify that. Sometimes they ask you simply, how steep does the angle have to be before the object begins to slide? So in that case, we have static friction. So let's say it's 0.4. Again, we have the same approach. The object on the incline, we have the weight, mg, the parallel component of the incline, the perpendicular component of the incline, we have the normal force which is opposite to the mg cosine theta, and we have the friction force which is the normal force times mu, times mu, mg cosine theta times mu, static friction in this case. So here we can see that the acceleration again is the force aiding minus the force opposing divided by the mass, but there can only be an acceleration if the aiding force minus opposing force is greater than zero, if there is a net force. If there's no net force, of course, no acceleration, which means the aiding force must be bigger than the opposing force, or the mg sine theta must be bigger than the mg cosine theta times mu sub s. So we can simplify that to the sine over the cosine being bigger than mu sub s, or the tangent being bigger than mu sub s, 
and so the angle must be bigger than the inverse tangent of the coefficient of static friction. Sometimes they have an added question. They may say, well, what is the velocity at the bottom of the hill? Now you'll see in another video that you can solve this using the energy equation. But if you don't use the energy equation, you use the equation kinematics, the approach is the same. You find your mg, your mg sine theta, your mg cosine theta, the normal force, the friction force, and again, the acceleration is equal to the aiding forces minus the opposing forces simplified you get back to what you had over here. You find the acceleration the exact same way as you did over here. The added difficulty now is you need to find the velocity at the bottom of the hill. So you need to use the equation kinematics where the, the velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus two times acceleration times the distance traveled. So in this case, initial velocity is zero if you start at rest. Twice acceleration, which you got from this right here and then the distance traveled, the hypotenuse, well, if the angle is 30 and the opposite side, the height is 10, then the distance here is 20, and that's how you then solve for the velocity at the bottom of the hill. Finally, they may add another difficulty to it. They may add another force, outside force, pushing on the object. And so, for example, let's say there's a force pushing horizontally against the object. Everything else is exactly the same as before. But notice we have to take this additional force and decompose it into the perpendicular and parallel components relative to the incline. Now notice that both the F sine theta and the mg cosine theta push the block into the incline, so the normal force is now going to equal the sum of mg cosine theta plus this vertical component, this I should say perpendicular component, F sine theta, both pushing the block into the incline and the normal force pushing back which means that the friction force now, which is the normal force times mu, is going to be this normal force times mu. Also notice that there's an additional force pushing against the block this way. If the acceleration is in this direction down the incline, then this force opposes the acceleration. So finally, you now have the acceleration equals the aiding force, again, mg sine theta, which is the same like it is everywhere, minus F cosine theta, the component of the force that is opposite to the acceleration, minus the friction force times mu. The friction force is going to be mg cosine theta plus F sine theta, it's going to be these two combined, times the coefficient of friction, and the whole thing divided by m gives you the acceleration. So here you can see that the approach is the same just about for all these types of problems, you always will find your mg, your mg sine theta, your mg cosine theta, the normal force. If there's friction, you also have a friction in the opposite direction, which is the normal force times mu. And if there's an additional force, you also have to take the components here and add them to the normal force and add them to the opposition force relative to the acceleration. So these are five good examples that give you a very global picture of how to deal with the inclined plane and how to find the acceleration of an object on the inclined plane.